We Brits are just rubbish at complaining. As a nation, we tend to put up with crap public transport, bad rules, terrible service. Thank you. And really annoying people. Well, it stops. It stops right here. So in this show, we're going to take on all the irritants that make living in modern day Britain just such a pain. And with the help of my crack team of complainers, we're going to start annoying the people that annoy you. Oh, for God's sake. Can you not just leave me alone? Just while I'm doing a TV show. Some people like that. After we die, I must appear before God. On tonight's show, Ben takes revenge on a high street irritant. Jesus never used a megaphone. Why are you annoying everyone? We have a drink, eh? It's not a cafe, it's an estate agent's office. Easy mistake to make. Something to eat, uh, drink. Estate agent. No, uh, steak frites. Mr. Angry tries for a ridiculous refund in a sex shop. Shocking. Is there something wrong with it? Um, so far it's delivered absolutely zero orgasms. <laughs> but first, me. It wouldn't be a complaint show without complaining about trains. Ever since the British Rail Sandwich, we've always moaned about them. It's a national pastime. Why do we pay hundreds of pounds to travel like this? Off to work every day, no space at all. How much do I pay for this and I don't even get a seat? Excuse me, I'm doing a piece to camera, okay? Why do we put up with this? I like my car. Do that again, or I'll break your glasses, do you understand? Last year, the great British public collectively spent 26 years waiting for trains. And these trains are the most expensive in Europe. My local line is run by First Great Western, who also happen to be the most complained about train company in the country. Train firm worst in Britain, Torquay Herald Express. First Great Western has worst track record for punctuality. This is Wiltshire. First Great Western treating us with contempt. Exeter Express and Echo. It's rubbish. In fact, it's so rubbish that the passengers are revolting. They formed a protest group and organized a meeting in Bath. To find out about the problems that had made them so mad, I decided to go along. Whatever happened, I was bound to get laid, and there was definitely going to be a great party afterwards. First up, I cornered a first Great Western representative. I wasn't prepared for an interview and didn't have any facts and figures, so I decided to wing it. Do you just look at them really as a bunch of train nutters, or no, are you really going to do something? We take it seriously. I mean, these people are, are paying tickets. They have, they're buying our service from us. But you're not providing a customer service because everyone's really angry and no one can get a seat. No, not a, I was, uh, well, everyone I ever meet on the train is, especially the people be, standing up and not yeah, doing anything. At the, the last meeting I was at and was saying that... Do you have a lot of meetings like this? Do you have a lot of meetings where people go, well done, Great Western? They have Great Western, well done people evenings. People come up. Um, oh, come on. They do. No, have you ever do. been to a meeting which, like, said on the door, you know, congratulations, Great Western evening. Come on, that never we're, happens. We're not hugely popular. I, no. I'm the first to accept that. And yeah. So we, we have to get our own problems right. There's, there's no two ways about that. Now, can you be booted off the franchise? If the performance falls below a certain level, then yes. When will that happen? Well, it won't happen. Oh, it won't happen. But when can that... Is it constantly under review? Oh, it is, yes. So it could happen at any stage? Well, the, the Department of Transport control the franchise. Right. They, they are constantly monitoring us. And yes, if we fail to meet performance... So you're targets. just putting up the fare as quickly as possible so that if you do get booted off, you've made enough money, or what's happening? Now, as I said, we are in a position with this, uh, this fares rise that's happening now. That will only cover about 60% of the reduction in the subsidy that we get. Okay. So we're actually having to find all that extra 40% from means other than just... So I just fares rise. <laughs> After turning down offers from Newsnight, I went into the meeting to hear some opinions. The overwhelming... Uh, response was, let's have another strike. Hopefully this time, first we'll get the message, or the government will get the message, and we'll get a rail system that we can use. Sadly, I only found passengers grumbling. But although it wasn't exactly the poll tax riots, at least they'd organised a day without paying, and I'm all for not paying. I was just about to leave when a mysterious Dickensian figure chipped in. Talking about overcrowding, not only First Great Western, but the other train operating companies say that there's no extra carriages available. 
but I, I've heard it whispered that there's a lot of carriages hidden away somewhere <laughs> that uh, are kept secret. Okay, hidden carriages, that's uh, sort of a really interesting one. Secret carriages hidden away while we were packed in like sardines? Did we have a day of action and an undercover investigative scoop? Much more exciting than I thought. I decided to join them at the National No Fair Day at Bath Station. I felt like Che Guevara, sort of. Later on, it gets ugly. In a very British way. Now it's time for some more revenge, and Ben is our man on the street. London's Oxford Street, famous throughout the world. Tourists come here to enjoy their Saturday afternoon and do some shopping. Now, hang on a minute. What's this guy doing? Shouting on a megaphone, ruining people's peace. After we die, we must appear before God, we must give account of our lives to the one that gave us life. Now I'm all for freedom of expression. But this guy's ramming his release down people's throats. Should we see how he likes it? Who do you think this is an effective way to communicate? Jesus stood on the mountain, people chose to go and listen to him. Jesus never used a megaphone. Why are you annoying everyone? Do you think any of these people are looking at you thinking, I want to be like him? Some of them hopefully are thinking, I want to be in heaven and not in hell. Why can't they just be happy living on earth? Yeah, because you, you don't live on earth for a very long time. Some get 80 years, some get 40 years. So if you only get a short time, why not enjoy it instead of thinking about death all the time? Because every day that goes by brings death a little bit closer. But don't you miss all the enjoyment of life by preparing for death. No, you don't miss all the enjoyments of life. You can drink in moderation, you can't drink to get drunk. Why did you bring up drinking? Can't you just enjoy life without drinking? It's just an example. So do you think anyone's going to walk past and think, I would rather commit a sin, and now that man with his megaphone has spoken to me, I'm not going to commit a sin. Do you not think that you could do better for your beliefs and your worship than standing here annoying everyone while they're walking past? Is there not a more effective way to spread your love? Perhaps by doing a good deed. This is one of several ways. I don't only do this way. Nice. I'm saved. After the break, Ben takes more revenge. He's the traffic warden warden. Now, there is actually a regulation walk. These angles, all the time. Now, that should be the angles you feel had all the time. And I catch up with one train protester who really knows what he's talking about. All right, sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding you. You've got quite a, a thick dialect. How long have you been travelling on the railway? Four years since we specified our submitting that I'm older than I should be. <laughs> Welcome back to The Complainers. I won't be a sec, sorry. We're exploring the depths of irritation, annoyance and frustration. Well, let me try one and see what happens. Let me just try my other card. Why can't we be more like this European? You British, you need to complain more! And now, me again. House prices, what is going on? If I wanted to buy a small cupboard in London, it's going to cost me a million pounds. It's insane. And who's making money from that? Estate agents like him, the spawn of the devil. In the old days, you could spot estate agents. They were the thick, posh blokes in Marks and Sparks suits. Now they wear designer pinstripe suits and they drive around in their stupid decorated cars. It's time they got a kicking. I mean, what do foreigners think? They must be laughing at us when they see the prices we're paying. Hello. 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 How much? Yes. We go from sort of to seven hundred pounds. Four hundred and fifty to seven hundred and fifty eight thousand.
And these days, the estate agent's offices don't even look like offices anymore. They're more like swanky bars. Maybe they're hoping that you go in to buy a drink and spend a half a million quid on a one-bedroom studio flat because you're drunk. We have a drink, eh? Woo! Quoi? Trois ou cinq bières et puis uh, un steak frites, quelque chose comme ça. Oh! Alors, bah je prends un vin, quelque chose à manger. Vous avez une carte? You have a menu? You have a une carte? Une carte, something to eat, a drink? Real estate. No, uh, steak frites. Ah, bravo, merci. You do properties? Non, 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 non. On va boire. Du vin, bière, steak frites. One million? Properties. Mais je comprends. No house, no. Eat, drink, please. Uh, we estate. Hein? We real estate. Un verre de vin. We, we real estate. Oh, mais c'est incroyable. Estate agent. Uh, François. Incroyable. Non? No, I'm afraid we cannot help. Oh, mais c'est incroyable. Cannot help, sorry. Incroyable, quel service, hein? Incroyable. This is a shit restaurant, you know? Vraiment shit. Incroyable. The traffic warden, scourge of every city centre and the bane of every motorist's life. Today, Ben will take revenge on behalf of us all. His job is to confuse, undermine, and waste their time. To do this, he'll be the traffic warden warden. Sorry, sir. Just to stop you for a moment. I'm the traffic warden warden. Yeah. Just been following you around. I've noticed a couple of infringements. Now, do you know what they might be? Um, you mean like people stopping anything? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm your infringements. I'm only here to inspect you. Uh, maybe my logging. Do you know what a code um, 3781645 QZ is? Have you read that? You haven't read that in the manual? No. Firstly, I mean, with, with a code 847332QZ, yes. firstly, every person you speak to should walk away with a smile. Okay. Now, was, was that explained to you? I mean, that... I never got talked, like, to be it, honest, I never got talked on. Really? I got talked, obviously, customer service, mm. it wasn't in cold. You know. Understood, but they should be walking away with a smile. I mean, you, you should be there to make someone's day better. Oh. And so, unless you can prove you made someone's day better, unfortunately, we will probably have to, to issue you a ticket. Now, there is actually a regulation walk, and it is very much, if you see my feet, these angles, okay? These angles, all the time. Now, if you can just walk like that with me, okay? Now, that should be the angles your feet are at all the time. I'm a trainee, so mm. they never taught me you should walk a certain way anyway. Well, they should have done, they should have done. Don't worry, now, now you've been taught, I mean, you can, always, you can always write in against that. I mean, if you're a trainee, shouldn't be a problem. Now, I am, unfortunately, going to have to give you a ticket. Okay, if you pay that within 10 minutes, uh, it's 30 pounds. After, after 20 minutes, of course, it will be doubled, as, as you're well aware with, with the rules. Now, I noticed you waiting and, and sort of loitering for a little bit too long in a couple of areas. Yeah. And then you came back round and then returned to them rather quickly. And I know it was quite obvious it was still you. I mean, you, perhaps if you'd put on a disguise or changed your, your number plates on your, your side, maybe people wouldn't have noticed. Hat slightly to one side. Again, it's, okay. yeah, that's great. If you could just straighten it up a bit, that's a code 743 violation, yeah. okay. Because of all this, and what I'm gonna have to do, I'm afraid, is, is give, you, give you a ticket. Unfortunately, that's for, for ruining people's days. Um, now, if you pay that, pay that within two weeks, um, it'll only be 30 pounds. After that, we'll double it and then treble it every other day, if you see what I mean, unless that day's a Wednesday. I will yeah. pay this. I mean, if you could, yeah, for, for the rest of the day, if you could just uh, display that on your forehead, that would be wonderful. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Cheers.
I've been looking at trains and finding out why people are so cross about them. Possibly because of the 26 years we spent collectively waiting for late ones last year alone. Earlier on, I went to the meeting of More Train, Less Strain, a commuter protest group campaigning against First Great Western, the most complained about rail company in the UK. They're going to strike, and I am too. Right, it's seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm at Bath Railway Station where uh, More Train, Less Strain are basically uh, doing a fare strike today where people are refusing to pay for their trip to Bristol. So we're going to join the train and uh, well, see what happens. That is rubbish. That is really rubbish. Couldn't they have got masks? Something told me that this was going to be the most suburban of protests. Why have you got a cow? That's a cow. Because there are rules about how many livestock you can take on a train. There are no rules about how many people you're allowed to cram into a carriage. So livestock are treated better legally than passengers? They are, if, yeah, if you wish to take a cow on the train. Five minutes until the train arrived. It was time to prepare for action. I've got my fake ticket, I've got my cow mask to get on the train and demonstrate. Come on. You need to have a valid ticket to use the service. You need to have a valid ticket? Yes, sir. I'm not pink, sir, I've got a first track ticket. You still need to have a valid ticket to use the service, I'm afraid, sir. Really? We're not authorised to let you through without a valid ticket. Hmm. So we'd like to go through. Um, so obviously you worry more about the, uh, your profits than actually people making a valid protest. Is that right? Well, nothing to say on the matter. You've got so nothing to I'm say. I'm to do my job. Yeah, so, you just... Come on. So it looks like first, as we suspected, are much, much more interested in their profits than they are in allowing the public to, uh, to protest. Uh, Unfortunately, I need to get into Bristol, so in my back pocket, bizarrely, I have a fare ticket. No, oh, I don't. It also, <laughs> it also says that I have a seat. It guarantees me a seat. I've never, ever had one on this service, so let's go through and see exactly what happens. Do you want to join us? I'm sure that I'd like a ticket. Could you open barriers, please? Well, that was exciting. That was proper confrontation there. But... There was a bit of a standoff, but I'm still through, still don't have a ticket. So, illegal cow on train. Did you hear the hordes of one shouting, let us through? I gather you're protesting today about the fairs. I gather you've the written fairs. a poem, is that right? Yes, I wrote it 10 years ago. First group have been appalling for 10 years at least. You wrote a protest I, poem uh, 10 uh, years ago. And it's, How long is it? Well, it's not very long. Rooty toot toot, do you like our new suit? We think it's really cute, purple puce and puke, because we're first group. Rooty toot toot, commute, commute, commute. We don't care a hoot if we make you destitute, because we're first group. Well, that was more a sort of song, wasn't it? it was a... Well, I can't say it. There is a law, first group have a law against singing railway songs on a railway station. Sorry, first Great Western have a law against which singing prohibits you singing railway, railway song. protest songs on the railway. Well, it was, well I'm um, going to do it now, break the law. OK. I hate trains, there are pains. I hate trains. Use your brain, I don't nice. like your strain. <laughs> That's great. Are you hip? You'd have thought that with all the pre-knowledge of this demonstration day that First Great Western could at least get the train that we're protesting on to be here on time, but weirdly enough, it's already late. It's here. The train's here. Woo! Actually, on the side of the carriage says Trans Pennine Express. So I don't know where we're going. I thought we were going to Bristol, but apparently we're transing the Pennines. Well, I've actually managed to find a seat. There's so many people have been forced down that way. Are you a regular commuter on this, sir? I, I am on this line, yeah. Yeah, and is this, I mean, is this a bit of a, you know, a press frenzy, or is it actually, is it justifiable? Is it a bad line? But going back in the evening is a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. People standing, not People going to People standing, seat. can't even get on the train sometimes. Just the delays of service. Stand for 45 minutes with no, no communication, you're not moving. Did someone let one go? Was it you? If you fart in this environment, nobody light a match, please. It wasn't me. Right, I'm going to try and exit now with my uh, fake ticket, see if I can get away with it. 
So do you want us to see my um do you want to have a chat with my colleague just not really, no. 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 Okay. Thank you. My first late Western ticket got me through. Almost all the other strikers use their real ones. Scabs. Mike Holmes, you're the station master here at Bristol Temple Meads. I know we can't call it master anymore. You're a station manager. That's right, yeah. Um, in your mind, what is the sort of single biggest problem that First Great Western are, are facing? You know, think, that they could do something about? I think from feedback from customers, it's that we, we simply don't have enough carriages at certain times of the day to get everybody on. I mean, you've seen this morning, some of the trains are, are very busy. You'd think? You know, to anyone who doesn't know about this, it'd be pretty easy. You just go, you think, right, we need more carriages, let's buy some. But apparently it's not as easy as, as you think just to buy them off the shelf. It's, you know? it's not, no, there's, um, there's not a shop there where you just go and buy a new train. Yeah. Um, All right, so uh, you're basically saying the, the main problem, as far as you can see, is rolling stock, lack of. Mm. So I think that's what I'm going to have to go and try and uh, investigate a little further and see if we can find some rolling stock anywhere. Someone's got some. Rolling stock and the lack of carriages are all tied in with the Dickensian man's conspiracy theory. He'd heard whispers. Luckily, he was also on the protest, and I pressed him for more information, which wasn't easy. How long have you been travelling on the railway? Four years since we first out there to admit that I'm older than I should be. All right, sorry, I'm having a little bit of trouble understanding you. You've got quite a, a thick dialect. More years than could be specified without admitting that I'm older than I should be. Right, so, yes. I mean, what, 100 years or <laughs> how, how long have you been travelling? Do you remember Brunel? No, 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 <laughs> not quite that old. Right, so you um, think it's not enough rolling stock? Yes. Right, where do you think it is? I've heard it whispered. Yeah. David Redfield will tell you more about this, but I've heard it whispered that there's a lot in the way at Long Marston. Well, they've got rolling stock at Long Marston? Yes. What are they doing with it there? Just hiding it away. Really? Yes. Okay. And, uh, well, I might investigate that. Long Marston, you say? Yes. I'll stay with Bridgewell. Yes. Thank you for that. Okay. That was very interesting. Yes. I shall get someone to translate it. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, we'll do something with it. Could it be true? Were hundreds of trains rusting in a field somewhere whilst commuters were crammed into overcrowded carriages? And who was this David Regwell who knew the secret whereabouts of the land of the lost locomotives? If I was going to spot these trains, I needed to go undercover as a train spotter. Suck on that McIntyre. Hang on, I can't quite see the... That blue one with a bit of yellow on it. That's a Scottish train. So that's, that's a train. Not, that's, yeah, that's right, a another train. Yeah. More trains. After the break, Mr Angry pushes his luck complaining in a sex shop. Have you got another one in the shop? We could just see if they vibrate the same. What do you think? They're the same. I've got the smoother version of it. I've had, never had no problems with it, to be honest. Jenny annoys the public in the tolerance test. Oh, would you mind going back a page, please? If I were getting another bite back. If it had been a fella, I would have clamped you. And in my hunt for trains, I infiltrate a military base. Woohoo! If we get caught, what happens? They shoot or something. <laughs> Put the camera down. Okay. Welcome back. Too many. Too many people. 20. Can only have 19. One needs to get out of the picture. Together with my crack team of professional complainers, we're taking on the irritations of everyday life. One needs to get out of the picture. Just one. Yep, yep. Step to one side, please, sir. Thank you. Come on in. The water's lovely. Ish. <laughs> this week, Mr Angry's out and about trying some extreme complaining. Today, he will use the tool of embarrassment. Usually, if you're not completely satisfied with something you bought, you can return it to the shop and ask for a refund, thanks to the Sale of Goods Act. But what if it's a sex aid that failed to satisfy? Any chance of a refund, then? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. I'd like to return an item, please. Is there something wrong with it? Um, so far it's delivered absolutely zero orgasms. Our policy is that we don't take back toys at all. I'm right. using it. I'm using it as instructed, and it delivering absolutely nothing. Obviously, yeah, it might not be satisfying, but that's not on our fault, to be honest. But it's not working as as it's meant to. It's not on our behalf, our fault at all. 
that right, though, okay. doesn't satisfy her in that way. I'm barely getting a moan out of her, to be perfectly honest. It's not even getting close. Yeah, but that, that could not be down to us. It's not my fault, obviously. Yeah, I, it can't I be my fault. I totally understand that, but like I said, I can't... I've seen films it. and everything, so I know how to use them. It's just... She doesn't seem to get it. Have you got another one in shot? We could just see if they vibrate the same. Try. Because it might be that one is faulty. Right, but it's just in a different colour. That's all right, blue, OK. What do you think? They're the same. Would you be happy with one of them? I've got the smoother version of it, and I've had, never had no problems with it, to be honest. Mm. It's just obviously not right for her, but I can't take it back due to hygiene reasons, cos it's not full to... But if I bought a car, and it only went to sort of 30 mile an hour, that still drives, but it's not satisfactory. That's different, you could bring a car back. They've got no hygiene reasons against cars. Whatsoever. What if a really dirty person was sitting in it? It's different. It's a car. It's a whole different situation. So each woman is different. It's a different feeling. You're so complicated as a species, aren't you? We are. Do you admit <laughs> that? We are. I'm not going to deny it. But it does vary from woman to woman. She's not going to be happy, you know, when I take this back. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. You're you causing me all sorts of relationship you problems here. Number for, for what? Sure. And I will explain to her why I can't take it back. Okay, so, so at least I can knows. shift the blame. Yeah, you can shift it onto me. I don't do it. Brilliant. Right, okay. Well, thank you very okay, much anyway. Then that's okay. And take care. Cheers Have then. Bye-bye. Nice Bye-bye. In fact, she was completely correct. You can't return a sex aid, even under the Sale of Goods Act, if you've used it. But then, if you've not used it, how do you know it won't completely satisfy? It's one of life's great Catch-22 situations. On the bright side, she did offer to phone my girlfriend and explain it all to her, which was nice. Time now to test the public's patience. We know that as a nation, we're rubbish at complaining. Sorry to disturb you. But just what will it take before we finally crack and grumble out loud? This week, Jenny will be committing the mortal sin of reading over the shoulder. just being really nice in the face of unforgivable behaviour. Rubbish complaining! Why not give me a tea as well? Oh, would you mind going back a page, please? If I were getting another paper. I'm reading it, you mind? That's it! That's the complaint. Three minutes and 40 seconds of reading over the shoulder and he's finally said something. A complaining hero. But one man remains. Five minutes in. This fella has amazing stamina. It's a hell of a lunch break. Seven minutes. And at nine minutes, he finally cracks. Here we go. We'll take it with you. <laughs> we'll take it with you. <laughs> He'd rather give his paper away than say anything. Very British. Why, bone light over a paper. It's not worth it, is it? So when faced with one of the most irritating habits on the planet, only one man had the nerve to stand up and be counted. Fair play to Roy Wallage, a mighty king of complaining. He's in touch with his anger. That's very annoying. And I hate people looking over my shoulder. If it had been a fella, I would have clamped him one. Oh, 
This is Mr. Angry. Now, he might not look very angry, but he is. He's angry about the estimated 2.6 billion, yes, 2.6 billion cold calls that are made each year trying to sell us something we don't want. But he won't take it lying down. They're wasting his time, so he's going to waste theirs. This week, it's going to be tricky to sell him anything because he's just had a nasty bang on the head. <whistles> to protect the identity of the salesman, we've changed his name to Bob. Hello? Good afternoon. Can I speak to Mr Sessions, please? Yeah, speaking. Hey, Mr Sessions, my name's Bob. How are you today? Hello. Uh, not too good. I've just banged my head under the table. I was under oh. the... I've dropped my keys and I just banged my head all against the phone. Oh, sorry about that. That's OK. No worries. Well, in, re in regards to a, a longer consolidation, just need to confirm a few details with you to send out your free no-obligation quote, sir. Right. OK. OK. Just for data protection reasons. OK. And, and sorry, who are you again? Sorry, my name's Bob. I was calling from... Right. OK. Sorry. I don't remember. What, what was that about? Uh, it was uh, for a set of three figures. Right, OK, um, carry on. If you could just confirm me your home telephone number firstly, please. OK, um, and sorry, who are you again? Sorry, my name's... Bob. Only from... <laughs> Mr Sessions. What, what's this regarding? It's uh, it, within regards to a loan. If you could just confirm me your home telephone number, please. Right, OK, you want my home phone number. And, and why do you need that? Data protection, sir. Data protection, OK. And, and you are who? My name's... Bob. Mr Sessions. Would you like my surname as well, Mr Sessions? Now, could you hang on while I go and get a pen? No, no, not, not a problem. Thank you. Sir. Not a problem. Hello. Hello, sir. Yep. Sorry, who is this? My name's Bob. Oh, I've written that down already. Okay. Um, what is it we were talking about? Well, what we were talking about, sir, Mr. Sessions, was uh, just a, a set of free figures to be sent out to you, sir. All I'm trying to do, sir, is just confirm a few details with you because send out your free no obligation quote, then, sir. Just to give you an idea what kind of rates we can bring back, what kind of payments you'll be paying, and, uh, and what's and so that on for? And so on. Well, if I can just confirm, can you just can, can you just uh, tell me what your home telephone number is, sir? My home telephone number. Please, sir. Yeah. Home telephone number. Is that my home telephone number? Please, your home telephone number, please. Mr. Um, Sessions. hang on, I've written this down somewhere. Bear with me just one second. No, certainly, sir, certainly. Hello? Hello, Mr Sessions. Oh, hello, who's this? Uh, uh, it's the same person that you were speaking to previously before What's you I? left the... Yeah, that's right, sir, you... Oh, you have to remind me. Who, what's your name again? Uh, my name is... Uh... Bob! Yeah, and if you could confirm me your home telephone number, please. My home telephone number? Please, sir, yeah. Oh, I, I'm afraid I can't remember what that is. What about your address, sir? Right, it's, um, it's 26, and I'm trying to... What's the name of the road? I can't remember. Sorry, what's your name again? trains. Why are they so expensive? And why don't they work? I was focusing on First Great Western, the UK's most complained about service in an effort to find out. The big issue was not enough carriages and no seats for the passengers. However, I'd had a tip-off that there were some empty carriages that were fit for use in a former Ministry of Defence base. I'd been sent to meet an informant, David Regwell. To avoid suspicion, I disguised myself as a train spotter and took a crash course in the extraordinarily fascinating world of train identification. And that one, that's a train. Yep. Yeah. That's a train. That's, that's, that's a train. Not, that's, yeah, that's right, it's another train. Yeah. It's more trains. Hang on, I can't quite see the. That blue one with a bit of yellow on it. That's a Scottish train. That's a train, though, yeah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Train. And then in the sheds? There's more trains. Trains. So, what is all that? That's a former uh, MOD military base where the government keep all its rolling stock. Right now, First Great Western, you know, our, my whole area, Gloucestershire, all that stuff, they haven't got enough rolling stock. Why are these things not just put on the rails and get on with it? Because there's not a political will or a Department for Transport will to get those trains out. On privatisation, they were sold to the management who then sold them on to the banks. So but... the three banks have invested and bought all these carriages and then they want to lease it back to the government to make money, but the government doesn't want to pay the price, so they just sit there doing nothing. Until the government decides in the franchise it wants more rolling stock. So how many, I mean, how much rolling stock do you think is in there? 
Uh, I think you'll find about 300 pieces of coaches in an engine. 300? There, there are that number of uh, pieces of on stock actually stored in, in the various depots. And well, can I go in there now? Would they just let me walk they, in? They wouldn't let you go in there. They, Why not? Who got, owns it? They've got it's owned by the Ministry of Defence. I'm going to get in there. I think you'll find it very difficult. Other people hey, have tried. Hey, other people might have tried. I'm going to get in there. Just watch me. That's your phone. It wasn't going to be easy getting into the former MOD base, but I wanted to be sure that the coaches were indeed modern and perfectly usable. Using secret Special Forces military techniques taught to me by Ross Kemp, I came up with a complex plan. And then we go like that, see? Plan there, turn it round, plan. In the end, we didn't need a plan. We just drove right in. Simple as that. OK, we're in. We've managed to smuggle ourselves into the base and uh, they don't know we're in here. So we're now going to... The, some of these trains, are they... I told you we'd that, get in, didn't I? Those... I told those, you we'd get in. Yeah, those trains... Come on, I told yeah, you we'd get yeah, in. Yeah, Come yeah, on, no, I'm right. I'm surprised, I, yeah. yeah. Keep dumb at. I was surprised. <laughs> this is like a train spot as paradise in here. I mean, can I just get on one and drive one out? That, that, yeah, they've even just come in. Really? They, yeah, they've been renovated. They come in a couple of weeks ago, those two. Well, they'd be ideal for Bristol commuters, those But this trains. is crazy. We've got, like, everyone's just sitting around waiting for a rolling stop. It's all sitting here. OK, we're going to have to get out because we've been rumbled, but we've seen some of the trains. I think there's more of it down there. Right. Okay. If we get caught, what happens? They shoot us, I think. <laughs> put the camera down, put the camera down. We're out. Down, see, I told you we'd get in. <laughs> and I just think what I've seen in there is an absolute national scandal. You think it's a scandal? It, it is. It, you think they're going to are... make the headlines here? <laughs> you're certainly going to make the headlines when they reveal what you've got what, in here. Local headlines or oh, national, national headlines? headlines right? National headlines. What the government's Put it surprise. In. Put it surprise. Come on. I am surprised at what's in there. And is that just amazes you? Just it it amazes me because there? there are trains in there that were only down in Wells in the West Country only a few months ago, weeks ago, some of it. Now they're just sitting here. I was scared though, were you scared? My heart it was, was a bit, a bit. It was a bit of a it's experience a bit going to a military base where they've got guards in. I, don't, I haven't often broken into a military <laughs> base to stare at trains. I, I suppose I'm something of a, I'm a bit of a, I'll be a bit of a hero on the train spotter circuit now. I'm a sort of ultimate train spotter. It's like extreme train spotting, breaking into military bases <laughs> and looking at them like that. I think you'll be a hero amongst commuters exposing what's going on. Excellent. Do you think I'll get free coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I was quite blown away by how many things are just lying around there, well, train-wise. It's a national scandal. I mean, it, the government should not be allowed to happen. It just shows that the privatised railway system isn't working when that... When so, that's... who do I need to go and talk well, to? Tom to... Harris, the rail minister in England. He's responsible Tom for... Harris? Yeah, he's also for national rolling stock policy, and he needs to get, get to grips with what's in that base. So, he's the man I need to talk to? He's the man in charge of uh, for England's railways. All right, can you hold these? Yep. You're probably... You're a train spotter? No. No? All right, never mind. If you do. Thank you very much for that. Okay. I'm off to uh, talk to Tom Harris. Right. See ya. After the break, I talked to a real live train minister about why those carriages aren't on the tracks. Your official title is Minister for Railways. Do you personally use public transport? I do. Do you get a seat? Yes. First class? Yes. Oh, really? Okay. Welcome back to The Complainers. I'm setting the controls for the heart of Britain's railways. I've been looking into trains and why so many people are so cross about them. Working on a tip-off, I went in search of carriages. What is all that? That's a former uh, MOD military base where the government keep all its rolling stock. We sneaked in and I can confirm they're real trains, not cardboard cutouts. Why aren't they being used? I went to see Christian Woolmar, a transport genius. Hopefully he could explain the mystery of the missing rail carriages. I mean, I find the whole railway system so confusing that if you're not, you know, a transport journalist, I think it's almost indecipherable. So I've brought this, uh, which is, I think, probably the easiest way, certainly in my mind, because I've got the mind of about a four-year-old, of understanding it. I mean, who owns these? They're all owned by banks. What about the track? And the track and the signals right. are owned by Network Rail. And then we have the train operators. So they're separate from the rolling stock and the track? Absolutely. And right. they lease uh, the rolling stock from uh, the rolling stock companies. They lease the stations uh, off uh, Network Rail. Um, and they use Network Rail's tracks to run their trains along. So very complicated, deliberately okay. complicated, so that, so that, nobody's so that nobody quite understands what's going on. To simplify, we've got this, the sort of national railway system, not working very well because there aren't enough of these, and yet 
in a base actually defended by the Ministry of Defence, we've got loads of carriages just saying they're not being used. It's because at root, it's the government has to fork out more money to pay for those trains, and it doesn't want to do that. Now, it will say, oh, no, it's not up to us, it's a commercial decision for the train operator. Not true. Actually, it's the government that decides this sort of thing. So it seems like it's the government that's to blame. Big surprise. I could really do with getting an interview with the minister responsible for trains. And here I am, Ministry of Transport, about to interview the Minister for Trains, Tom Harris. Be afraid, Paxman, be very afraid. Minister, thank you very much for seeing us. Your official title is Minister for... Railways. For railways, for trains, here in charge yeah. of them. Do you personally use public transport? I do. Do you get a seat? Yes. First class? Yes. Oh, really? OK. We went on the um, more train, less strain. Yeah. Um, demonstration, people demonstrating against uh, First Great Western and refusing to pay. And one of the things that came out of that day... Did and, you pay? Huh? Did you pay? I didn't, actually. I did break the law, I have to say. I'm sorry okay. about that. But, uh, it's I'll been noted. On that one. OK, yeah, well, it's on telly anyway. Um, you think that sort of demonstration does any good? or I mean, it certainly created some publicity. Well, see, if I say it did some good, then that sounds awful like me endorsing people not paying affairs, which, of course, yeah. I wouldn't do. Well, you know, one of the main points of that demonstration was that livestock has more, have more rights uh, in the way they're treated when they travel than, than people. What do you think about that? Well, first of all... I mean, why should a cow it, have more rights it, than it, I do on it, First Great Western? Well, a cow's ultimate destination isn't as attractive as Paddington. No. So, that makes it all right? No, I'm not saying it makes it all right, but, but we make choices as, as individuals yeah. about whether to go onto an overcrowded train. But ultimately... So, because cows don't choose to go on a train, they should have a better ride than me, who it, pays over £150. It comes, pounds. it comes back to the argument about whether you actually want a turn-up-and-go railway. As long as we have a turn-up-and-go railway, then, you know, people will have to stand. The one thing that really came out was that there is a lack of rolling stock. Yeah. And someone told us that there is a MO, former MOD base mm. where there, are, there is a lot of rolling stock just sitting there. Why are they not just put on the... On, into use. The stuff that's uh, uh, Long Marsden is essentially, most of it is over 35 years old. Um, not particularly suitable to some routes. But here's the thing, I'm not a rail woman. It's up to the train operating companies who have a lot of experts in this field to decide what kind of rolling stock they need. Now, if, if but, any but train operating company I, comes I accept, to me sorry, and says we want to... But I, I, do, this I do accept that, but surely your job at some stage is to boot some people off the franchise, like First Great Western, and get someone in who actually does a proper job. You know, if, if you're being treated the way that First Great Western was treating the passengers, morning after morning, um, I can well understand why people felt so frustrated. And they also felt that no one was listening to them. Even if they don't improve, they will be in a position where they could be the very first ever train operating company since privatisation to lose the franchise. Well, here's hoping, anyway. Well, thank you very much. Is that it? We all right? No big phones or anything. No, no, it's a serious one. <laughs> Even after talking to the minister, I still wasn't clear why there weren't more trains. Still, at least one train company got his vote of confidence. First Great Western told us they have real customer commitment. Excellent. Since we filmed this, that pathetic little demonstration we went to at Bath Station seems to have had an effect. Because of the bad publicity, Ruth Kelly, the Secretary of State for Transport, has had a word with First Great Western, and they're now going to have to pay £29 million worth towards getting this whole service a bit better. That means more carriages, better service. I mean, look at this. There's space, and there's two whole carriages on this train. Woohoo! I'm going to sit down. Not everything's perfect, obviously. Still a little bit tight. Still, it's only a five-hour railway journey, so... No big deal. Only cost me £220, so not a problem. Good news, huh? Ow, my legs hurt. Next time on The Complainers, Jenny tries to pee in a community policeman's helmet. I've drunk a little bit too much. Could I use your helmet? <laughs> Seriously, man, are you waiting to be up or not? No, I'm serious. I look into mobiles and radiation. Masks turn up in some very unusual places. The aerial is actually the post. Goes so it up. goes up the angels. Yep. Chuff. Chuff. <laughs> but before we go, an apology. Television really isn't what it used to be. Unfortunately, you're just not allowed to lie on it anymore. Um, Channel 5 lawyers have insisted that I point out that, obviously, I don't normally travel in economy and those terrible conditions we filmed. I always go first class. But I just want you to know the reason I did do that was because I care about you. I want to make conditions better for you. That's a lie as well, isn't it? Oh, well. Uh, can I get another bottle of champagne, please? Thank you.
Oh, I love the train. 